Hi guys, welcome to Snake Nook. I'm Vanny and with me I have little Dipper. He's my daughter's banana ball python. He's gonna be helping me out with today's intro. The topic of this video is, you must stand for something or you'll fall for everything. Three bits of information about snakes that is out there that I'm not too fond of and I'll tell you why. Stay tuned. Number one, bioactive is best. Not only have I seen this in, in a lot of videos, I've also seen it on Craigslist. I saw it today. Here is a rat snake, a Texas rat snake for sale with its bioactive enclosure. And in the ad, it specifies that there is no cleanup needed because there is a cleanup crew of isopods and springtails. While the concept of having a bioactive enclosure is is attractive especially to new snake keepers you have to be aware of the care and maintenance of that enclosure as bioactive it's not just a matter of throwing in your isopod colony your springtail colony and if you're adding some mealworms in there or whatever else is included in a bioactive setup you also have to work to keep the cleanup crew alive and they're not going to magically get rid of everything. You will need to get in there and remove some of the excreted waste at some point or another. You cannot just leave it up to the cleanup crew. It's not that simple. You must do your research. It, even though it's, the, the bioactive setup is beautiful, you have to do your research in order to do it right. And it's not that simple. Number two, don't be intrusive, leave them alone. Oh boy, well, we didn't cross that line. That line was crossed a long time ago by people that decided to bring snakes from the wild into captivity. So the current day snake keeper is not being intrusive. What I think is going on here with people suggesting and pushing out bioactive and other people saying don't be intrusive, leave them alone, it's sort of like they want to keep snakes in captivity in a very natural way, which is sadly that's very ironic. I, I, I see the concept behind it. Yes, bioactive, awesome. I understand what they're talking about when they say, leave them alone. Don't need to bother them too much. You're stressing them out. I get that too. But at the end of the day, if you want to have a solid relationship with your snake, you are going to have to be there. You are going to have to take them out of their enclosure and they will have to be conditioned to handling. That's all there is to it. And number three, let them know you're there. So whether it's by hook tapping or some other way sometimes people will tell you that your snake is sleeping and, and you, you need to wake it up um yeah um un unless you uh, have remarkable skills of stealth that no one has yet discovered there is no way that you can surprise a snake or sneak up on a snake. Yes, your snakes, your pet snakes do get accustomed to the goings on in your home. And so of course they're going to sleep peacefully. There are many times when they will be asleep and you are in the house. That's just gonna happen because they got used to being pets. However, um, you can't sneak up on one. You are not gonna go wake up a snake. By the time you open the enclosure, they already know you're there. So. Uh, they're, they're that intelligent. Now, what's really going on, I think most of the time what's going on here is that your snake remains very, very still, frozen even without flicking the tongue because they want to remain unnoticed. They do not want to get picked up at that time or they don't want to interact with you at that time. So they remain perfectly still. It doesn't mean they're sleeping. It means they're trying to avoid getting noticed. That's an instinct that they bring with them from the wild. Don't fall for everything you hear. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And just remember, you can take the snake out of the wild, but you can't take the wild out of the snake. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a good one. Bye.